Uh, it's probably as most young boys uh, playing on the streets, um, playing in local teams, uh, representative teams as well. At times I'd, I'd play for the school in the morning, my youth club in the afternoon, and, and I'd still be playing with my mates until it went dark at night. So uh, I was always constantly with the football under my arm or, or kicking about in the streets with my mates. And, uh, and that's what we did in those days. It was, uh, um, there was always impromptu, Football matches organised, 15, 20 a side on the, on the pitch where, where I used to live. Um, and there, it was great fun. I always remember it uh, with fondness. It was uh, a time where you, you just went out and, and enjoyed, enjoyed the game of football. I was always a midfield player in, in school teams, representatives, until I went to, to Man United. And um, I was there probably six months in and I wasn't really progressing if I'm honest and uh, uh, probably as a last throw of the dice Sid Owen who was my youth team coach then uh, decided we were actually playing a Norwegian team uh, remember it to this day and uh, he decided that he was going to play me up front just didn't really know what I was doing but I ended up uh, scoring three goals um, and I think they took the view, well, he's not going to make it as a midfield player. Maybe we can uh, persevere with him up front. And that's, that's where it started, really. My first uh, game uh, debut was in the League Cup. And that was only as a consequence of, um, I think it was Arthur Graham, who was actually had a, an upset stomach, shall we say, and uh, wasn't able to play in the game. So I was just told minutes before the game I was going to be playing in, in the League Cup. From me, my, my own personal view was that, well, if I do get an opportunity, I've got to try and take it. And because you never, you were never sure whether or not you were going to get another one. So I played in that game. Thankfully, I actually scored a winner, and, uh, scored a, a goal rather that uh, uh, allowed us to draw the game that we won the, the replay. Um, didn't play particularly well, if I'm honest, but uh, got the goal, got a few headlines and, and made an impact. And um, then I had to obviously build on that because uh, I'd got my foot in the door. There was a little bit of trust in me from the manager that uh, he could see that I could um, be effective at that level he was playing me at. So uh, from that point on, it was, it was up to me to keep on building those performances. Well, I had two good years, uh, broke into the team, um, scored goals, one Young Player of the Year award from the PFA, so I was in a good place. And then all of a sudden, this opportunity was presented to me. The reality, from my own personal point of view, is that I didn't didn't want to go. I was having a great time. I was I was playing in a good team, fantastic stadium, great fans. Uh, I was enjoying every minute of it. And then all of a sudden, because of the situation where maybe the club felt that I, I wanted to leave or I, I was going to push to go, uh, which wasn't the case really. Um, and that miscommunication never, never allowed itself to, to be strong enough. Certainly from my point of view, I should have just come and said, listen, I'm having a great time here, I don't want to go. And that would have been the end of it. But uh, I think there was uh, a feeling maybe that because of the circumstances with, with my contracts, then, then I was likely to leave. So they, obviously the club had to protect themselves and, and that's why they pushed to obviously have a a fee that uh, was representative of, of my value at that time. As a player, I was quite aggressive by all accounts. So uh, um, transferring my, my natural game and how I'd got to the level I'd got to uh, when, I, when I went over to Spain. When you do go to a new club, you, you want to impress, you, you want to score goals, which I was struggling to do. Uh, the build up was a little bit slower than I was used to. I wasn't getting uh, the quality of ball in terms of where I felt I could be most, most effective. And, and the refereeing of, of the games and my physicality was, was different. So I, I basically struggled. And in the end, I was playing the type of game that wasn't really what I was about. It was, um, it was a frustrating time, I have to say, because 
I knew I could show a lot more. It was a fantastic opportunity. And looking back on it now, it was, uh, it was an opportunity, unfortunately, I didn't take. I had the opportunity to come back. Uh, it's fair to say, if I hadn't been United, Man United, that uh, came back for me. Uh, I would I would have almost certainly stayed at Bayern Munich. They just understood what was important to players and what players needed to be comfortable with or things that needed to be put in place for a footballer to be able to perform on the pitch. And they had a real insight into that and I was really impressed with, with Munich. And like I said, given the opportunity and if it had been any other club other than United, I would have stayed there. Well, he picked me up. I think he took me for my medical. Um, and we were just driving, talking about football. Uh, clearly, he'd been there a year uh, before, and um, and I'd heard all about how he was he was quite strong, and and he he suffered no fools. He he was prepared to to be very very strong in the dressing room as well. So I was okay with that. I was looking forward to that. Um, he was obviously strong-willed. He understood exactly what was required at that time. United had been allowed maybe just to drift on the standards and maybe behaviours of players and people in and around the club went where they needed to be to, to allow them to be as successful as they were in the future. So he understood that clearly straight from the off and uh, clearly was going to do something about it. What he had was the total support of... Uh, the chairman and the board of directors and, and the club as a whole because they understood what he was doing in the background and that was the key to it. Uh, they understood he was the best man for the job. Um, it was going to take time. And in that day and age, you, you got more time uh, than you certainly would have done. Uh, that is obviously that question, would he, would he have kept his job in this day and age? Probably not, if we're honest, because uh, the, the platforms and social media and all the all the noise that surrounds football in these days, uh, eventually, given that we weren't playing particularly well and had been to getting on for three years uh, without any success and a, a club like United, then clearly he would, he would have been under pressure a lot sooner. I think the club came together because people from the outside were trying to say, well, Fergie needs to go, um, his time's up, but the club was strong in that time. We've got a taste, obviously, of winning trophies, and I think that's important for a group of players. That you have that experience together, that you understand, you have a, a level of understanding of what it actually takes to to get over the line and and be able to lift a trophy. We had the disappointment, obviously, of missing out on the league title. And okay, we, we'd won an FA Cup, we'd we won a couple of winners' cup, league cup as well around that time, but still we hadn't won the league. Um, as I said many, many times, the longer it, it took and each season that went by without us winning the league, the pressure grew. So when we got so close in 92 and missed out again, there was that feeling where maybe it's not going to happen for us as a group. Um, and I think that's where uh, Sir Alex understood and was really strong and supportive of that group of players uh, because at that point he could very easily have ripped up that team and, and, and started again and, and brought another group together. Uh, but uh, he had that trust in us. Clearly, he needed uh, other players, which he, he introduced. And, and obviously, Eric coming to the club was the catalyst to, to bring it all together. But um, on occasions, I think people forget that actually we weren't a bad team, even before Eric. We were very close. But obviously, Eric just gave us that extra little bit that allowed us to win it. We went a million miles away, but, but like in fairness, I give him the credit that uh, he deserves because um, he just had that little sprinkling of stardust that um, that we just lacked, maybe, and and his presence and his and his manner, uh, not only on the field but off the field as well, and how he behaved in terms of his his training because he was first first rate trainer, uh, always. Uh, first out, last in, um, and that permeated right through the club. He'd be out there doing flicks and, and volleys, and, and we said, all right, we need to get involved in this. Uh, so senior players would, would join him, so the group became bigger. And then obviously the likes of uh, Giggsy and Beckham and, and Scolzi, they, they were watching all this, and, and they just came through, and they had that same mindset, in my view. From my point of view, he was the first player 
uh, when I came back, first played in in English football that I played with, that would would drift into spaces. Whereas I, I was used to a strike pound. I've been predominantly in, in my day it was four four two and two strikers. One came short, the other one went long, or vice versa, and you just played off each other. Eric wasn't like that. He was constantly looking for spaces where he felt he could impact and. And if he did get the the ball in those in those spaces in between the lines, as we call it now, um, he was very adept at that. Um, but he'd mix his game up as well. Sometimes he would come up alongside me. Other times he'd be dropped 20, 30 yards off me, which for me was a little bit difficult because I'm thinking, well, I'm supposed to be playing with with the partner up front. But it, he was very, very clever. Understood the game really, really well, and understood how we could impact the game in the best way. And uh, and, and I felt just watching him and understanding what he was trying to do that enabled me to add something to my own game as well. So uh, I'll always be grateful for that insight into the game itself. I went to Chelsea at exactly the right time. Uh, they were a mid-table Premier League club at that point, but they signed Ruud Hullet. Uh The next year it was Viali and, and Zola. Uh, turned up and we talk about timing and luck and decisions that you make that shape your career and, and my decision to leave United at that stage was, was perfect because uh, that was the start of feeling the club that they wanted to get better and, and I really enjoyed my time. I, I used to be a Chelsea fan, believe it or not. And if you recall, Chelsea hadn't won a trophy uh, before that first FA Cup win for, for a similar period than United. Um, with their journey to, to win the Premier League. So uh, so that resonated with me as well. So, um, yeah, were good times. I had a fantastic time there. Um, bounced around a few clubs after that. So Southampton, obviously, uh, was a difficult situation. I think we, I was part of the, the great escape when um, we were tailed off for a long time in that season. I think we, uh, we got a draw in the first 10 games and then uh, we were obviously it was an uphill battle from that point of view, but we were able to get our, ourselves out of it and uh, kept them in the league. And then I went to Everton, short-term deal, and then big decision f for me really because I, I was at a point in my career I'd never played in a lower league and I didn't really want to break that. Uh, I felt it would be a personal thing for me if I could stay at the top level th for for the the duration of my career, but uh, uh, I spoke to Graham um, and I felt that I could help them. They were a good team. They had some really good young players and uh, we had a great first year, got up at the first attempt and the second year, uh, my last year, my, my last, last actual 90 minutes was uh, at the Millennium Stadium in the League Cup final. So uh, I'm forever grateful for that. I wasn't one of those players that from the age of 20, 25, I had the view that, okay, when I finish the game, I'm going to be a coach, I'm going to be a manager. That that wasn't my mindset in those days. But but you get to, I think, the, the time when I left United and went to Chelsea. Um, I've been at United for so long and it's always difficult uh, when you, you're a player that's come through the ranks and you don't really understand your standing in the game until you actually leave. Uh, whereas it, I've been at United so long, um, I went to Chelsea and there was a lot of young players there that uh, if I started talking, which I've talked more today than I ever did when I was at Chelsea probably, but but when I did speak, I was, I was conscious that people were, young players were, were listening and hanging on my every word just because they understood that I had more experience in the game and, and, and had won trophies and they wanted to hear about it. And that that was the first inkling where I, where I felt Okay, uh, I quite enjoy that part. I try, I try to help uh, the younger players to just have a, an understanding of what's required at the level we were playing at, and and I really enjoyed that part. And that's when I started to do my badges and maybe think that uh, my future was still going to be in the game when I when I finished playing. We had a double header. Uh, we were playing Italy on the Saturday and Denmark. On the Wednesday, uh, we got well beaten against Italy. I think it was four 0 So, Bobby, obviously Bobby Gould at that time, the manager, uh, brought everybody together and said, um, 
he wasn't going to continue. Um, that was his last game. And basically said that he'd recommend, recommend him myself and, and Neville Southall to to take the next game on the Wednesday, which was news to me, uh, news to Nev as well, because there's no inkling that's what he was going to do. So he was dropped on our toes to a certain extent. But um, but we got on with it. Uh, we were based in, in Wrexham for the, the days leading up to the game. The game was actually at Anfield. Um, I think it was significant, probably for the fact that I, I saw Neville Southall in a black suit for the first time ever. Um, but I was actually playing still, so I was picked to play in the team itself and never was on the sideline and uh, we got through it. Um, and then obviously um, everybody went away, it was international football, obviously I was going back to my club. Um, but the Welsh FA were then inviting people to uh, interview for the job. And I was actually away in uh, on holiday, I think it was in Cyprus. And um, I remember ringing up making sure that my name was on the list and I got an interview and and I got the job for two games. Um, uh, maybe because they weren't too sure of what they were getting. Um, and I had to make the best of it. Uh, we won the first one, lost the second one. But clearly it showed them enough in terms of my preparation and and how I wanted to shape the team. And, um, and I got the job and uh, kept it for the next four years. enjoyed the experience so I thought I'm at the stage in my career where, where I can do this uh, clearly I was still playing uh, which was was difficult um, so I made the decision straight from the off that uh, I wasn't going to play international football anymore I was just going to separate both of them uh, I was a, clearly a player when I was at Blackburn at my, my club side but when I turned up for for the Welsh games I was very much the manager and, and coach of the team so uh, it was a real learning experience. I was learning on the job. I mean, goodness me. Um, I think it's clear when when players go from um, playing situation and then get the opportunity, which top players get. They get the opportunity that maybe other people don't get because of their, the quality of their playing career. And all of a sudden, because they haven't had that time to build a philosophy or understand their own philosophy or, or what way they, they really believe, their, their teams uh, want to play. I think that's why some fall by the wayside. Sometimes top players uh, who struggle to become managers just because they haven't had that, that time and that transition. For me, having the Welsh job, it was perfect because you were exposed to everything that uh, was involved in football in terms of preparation, uh, the game itself, usually against top class opposition that were better than you. So you had to tactically, you had to be up to speed. and. And all this would, would happen in a small space of time. You, you had to be really on your game and then all of a sudden everybody went away. And then you, you sat in a darkened room and took a deep breath and said, goodness me, what the hell happened there? Um, but then it was on, the onus was on you to, to make sure you learned from every experience. So you were exposed to it, then taken away from it. You, you were able to think, goodness me, I've got to be a lot better than I was last game. And I had four years of being able to build my own philosophy and have that space to to understand what I needed to do better. And from my point of view, it's it's perfect. I look at Ryan Giggs now and his situation very similar to, to my situation. And I think that will be the making of him as a manager and as a coach. We got close numerous occasions. Um, we always felt as, uh, as an international team that uh, the hardest bit was qualifying. Once we got there, we always felt we'd do okay because we had good players. Uh, not in every position, but predominantly we, we were a good side. And uh, with the likes, well, obviously, me and Rush was a world-class keeper in Neville South, so we weren't bad. But the hardest part was, was qualification. And it was very, very difficult for us to qualify, given that more often than not, we were either the third or the fourth seed uh, in the groups. Uh, so. It was only the, the winner of the group that went through, that qualified, then you were in the lottery. If you did get to the, the runners-up spot, then you had the opportunity into a playoff, but uh, that wasn't a given. Thankfully, the format's changed now and, and the first team goes through and the, and the second place 
uh, follows and that's allowed Wales obviously to, to qualify in recent times and showed everybody how, how good they are. So we've had that disappointment, I had that disappointment as a player and, and we got really close obviously in the, in the Euros one year and um, just missed out in the playoff against Russia. Difficult for us because huge team, huge country. We actually went over to Russia, got a nil-nil draw, so we're all thinking we'll bring them back to the Millennium Stadium and it'll be the time that we qualify, but we missed out, got beat one nil. And, and on the night, probably froze a little bit, and I included myself in that because I always look back on that and think my decision-making on that night wasn't as good as it needed to be in terms of substitutions and understanding the momentum of the game. And I think that's the one thing as a coach you improve as you age is that you understand the game, you understand what's actually happening in any given moment and you understand because you've seen those circumstances before and you know the, the correct decision to make substitutions. Whereas in that game, I always, I always felt I, I wasn't quite quite as strong or as assertive as I needed to be in those moments. I was, I was Welsh team manager for four years, four and a bit years actually, and um, I think I only, only had about 40 internationals. So uh, I was still quite inexperienced as, as a manager and as a coach. Um, clearly now I've got 400, 500 games, I don't know what it is, but uh, um, I look back on that and think, well, in the same circumstances, a lot of things I would have done different. Because of the, the four years development that I, that I had with the Welsh squad, um, I knew I knew how to prepare teams. I, I'd educate myself as well. I'd done all the courses. I was a, a UA for pro license holder at that point, uh, 2003. Um, my my feelings in terms of how I wanted my team to perform or uh, what traits they, they needed to have to be successful, they were they were there. My, my philosophy was embedded, uh, I knew which direction I wanted to go rather than being a little bit lost maybe when I was the, the, initially the first team ma uh, manager at, at Wales because I wasn't quite sure which was the right way. But when I got the Blackburn job, I was very clear in terms of my intentions of how I wanted the team to perform. When I took over, I think we were second from bottom. We were only four or five games into the season, so that can't happen. But I think as soon as I was left for, for Newcastle, I'd resigned and, and gone up the road. So um, it was still a difficult circumstance and a difficult situation because the, the club wasn't as prepared of, in terms of the, the managerial change. So I came in and um, I have to say that the group of senior players at, at Blackburn at that time, like so Gary Flickcroft and and good young players, uh, the likes of Matt Janssen, and uh, we had a good core that I felt comfortable with. We had an outstanding keeper in Brad Friedel as well. And I knew I had a group of players that I could work with. Uh, their work ethic was, was exceptional. I, I worked them really, really hard, I have to say, in, in my first year, and uh, uh, a few of the older guys um, blamed me for <laughs> finishing their careers a little bit sooner just because the training was so hard. Um, but I felt that was important uh, because I, I wanted my teams to be strong right at the end of games and we certainly were that. So we got confidence and we always felt if we were behind in games the last 20 minutes, we always felt that we had a real chance because if we, if we were within one, one goal of any team that we always felt we had a chance to win. I think, from my my point of view, it was whenever I went up against United, it was uh, I always wanted to do well, only only because I viewed Sir Alex as the best manager, and I and I wanted to test myself against the best. So whenever I went up against him, I didn't ask for any favors. He, he wasn't going to get any from me either. I, I was there to try and beat his team because I viewed them uh, and him and himself as the manager as the best that was around and. Uh, I wanted to beat them. Uh, that was my my attitude to it. That was never going to change. I think sometimes it was misinterpreted. Maybe looking back, I think people thought, "Oh, he doesn't like United anymore. He's got an issue with Fergie." It was never about that. It was always about the fact that I I wanted to put myself up against what I viewed as the the best club and the best the best manager at that time. And uh, and when you are able to to overcome 
uh, a club of that stature and, that, and a manager of that stature, then clearly that's going to going to resonate around football and, and people might acknowledge that maybe that you're doing a good job. People made assumptions and in my view they, they were wrong. I think it all stemmed, it was from one game, if I'm honest. Um, we, we played played Chelsea at Ewood Park and it was, uh, it was a great game. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, I think it was Iron Robin got injured, uh, missed time tackle and uh, and he got injured and had to go off. Um, and it was a physical game. I mean, no bones about it. Chelsea could look after themselves in those days as well. So we, we matched them up. In the end, they they beat us 1-0, I think. And uh, I remember Jose going to the crowd and, and whipping everybody up in his in his grey flannel coat, if I recall. And uh, even though we got beat at that time, I was actually proud of my players in terms of they matched uh, Chelsea in, in in that physicality, but in, in in the game as well. Unfortunately, the headlines after it weren't, weren't great, and there was a lot of focus on on the injury to to Robin and and how well our approach led to the injury. And I thought that was unfair on the night. And unfortunately, people started throwing mud. And some of it sticks, and we 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 took a long time to to shake it all off. The decision to go to City wasn't shaped, in my view, um, because of my, my playing career. Um, I didn't attach any relevance to that. Uh, in my view, I was a professional football manager and I was going on to the next project or the next level of, of club that I needed to move on to. I looked at the situation, um, I looked at City, I felt um, they, they got a brand new stadium, they had uh, apparently owners with lots of money, which wasn't the case when I found out when I actually got there. So uh, I made a decision to go to City because I felt I was going from Blackburn, very stable, well-run club, and Man City would be a step up on the next level, as as it was. And when I found out when I actually got there, uh, the reality wasn't wasn't that in terms of the level of standing of the club. Actually, Blackburn were in a better place than actually Man City were. Uh, they had better training ground, the, they were more, more stable, the ownership was was better at that time. And those were all assumptions that I made wrong because I felt maybe Man City would have been better in that regard. But I made the decision, I was there, I was gonna make the best of it. And uh, and unfortunately, I think the Shinawatra era was, was closed, in, closed in a little bit of mystery and uh, an intrigue and never really got to the bottom of why players had to be sold. And I think we we had the situation with Vedran Koluka, who arguably was one of our better players at that time. Uh, he had to be sold because there was no money. Uh, we made a good deal because there was a player I'd seen I wanted to sign for for Blackburn, but we, we couldn't afford him. And uh, that was Pablo Zabaleta. So we were able to bring him as a replacement for Koluka. So, uh, it was one of the better deals, but um, there was clearly a lot of turmoil and, and obviously the, the club was taken over by uh, Sheikh Mansour and then overnight it just changed completely as a club. I think the reality was was that I, was, I wasn't their guy and, and you always know if there's a change of ownership that you might put off the stay of execution, but at some point they, they, will, they will make a change because you're just not their guy and there was an acceptance of that. I tried to obviously uh, make my my tenure as long as I could. We, I, I felt there was a thinking in it as we went into the second year, which was the first first full year as the new ownership. Um, I always felt that there was that underlying feeling that maybe they were just waiting for the moment. And, and I've been told subsequently that I was probably very, very close on three occasions before I was actually sacked. So uh, I did well to last probably as long as I did because uh, there was always that feeling, well, at some point they're going to make a change. Vinny was, was a player that, from the first time I saw him, I actually saw him on a pre-season tour of Germany. He was playing for Hamburg and I was I was with Blackburn and I thought, that's... that's guy at the back, he was actually playing 
um, in midfield in those days, and uh, uh, he was just clearly big, big presence. He was directing people. He was telling them where to go, what to do, and uh, very clearly a leader of the men around him. And uh, I thought, well, if I ever get a chance of getting in a room with him to to sign him, he he'd be one that I would want. I would want to sign, just because of that initial uh, observation of him. But um, we had the opportunity to, to bring him to the club. He was actually before uh, the change of ownership, and uh, I got got wind that uh, uh, he was available. Um, his club uh, were willing to to look at letting him go. And uh, Man City, if we're honest, we weren't an easy sell in those days. It's quite easy for for Pep these days to say, "All right, Man City want to sign the top players," but. For a lot of the time, and certainly in the initial period, when when people didn't understand what uh, the ownership were going to do with the club and how successful they were going to be, we were viewed as somewhat like interlopers, trying to gate crash the party of the top clubs because it was Man City. They they weren't viewed as a top club in Europe, and we were flying out to try and buy all these top players and uh, getting laughed out of town, if we're honest. But I sat down in in front of Vinny and uh, just explained what why I felt the, the direction of the club was going to be. But very quickly, he understood. Uh, I was trying to tell him that this club's going places. We, we, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I need players that are leaders. I needed players to, to, to manage that dressing room. And uh, I'd seen him before. He, he acknowledged that. Um, he was pleased that I wasn't just picking names out of Arte. I actually wanted him personally. And I think that was a uh, start of a relationship that uh, that's continued and uh, he's an outstanding individual, um, notwithstanding his ability as a football player. So his, uh, his manner and his behaviour and his standards, uh, those are the ones that I wanted at the club. The circumstances of the game, I think everybody knows, is that City needed to win. Uh, we needed to obviously better or equal to the, the results of, of Bolton, who were playing at Stoke, funny enough, um, at the same time. So we're in the game and uh, clearly we were thinking, well, it's, uh, it's the last throw of the dice for us. Uh, we, we'd done really well to get in that situation and in the first place. If, if we're honest, um, we had a terrible run in. We had games against Liverpool, Arsenal, um, and we'd been those clubs. Uh, just to get ourselves in, into the position where we found ourselves just with a chance of staying up. Um, a lot of people didn't think it was much of a chance. It was more dependent on on the result of the other game. But but the game itself was quite bizarre. There were so many incidents in it. We, 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 were, we were behind in the game um, from memory. And uh, then we, we got back on. Uh, all of a sudden, News from the other game started coming through. Uh, Joey Barn gets sent off. Uh, we're down to 10 men. We've got our noses in front. Uh, we're still leading with, what was it, six minutes to go, something uh, daft. Um, and then they made a couple of changes. I think Jekyll came on and, and made a difference. Um, they got back on level terms. And I always remember at that point, we knew we were safe because uh, the other result came in. So at that point, I wanted to make sure, because United were up the road, obviously weighing on the result again, I'm thinking, I wouldn't mind United winning, if I'm honest. Um, so I'm thinking, right, we've just conceded the second goal, it's 2-2. Um, and I think it was uh, Jay Bothright looks over, what do you want us to do? Because the players obviously understood that the, the game was over and we, we'd stayed up. And we were just saying, just kick it as far as you can, right in the corner, the game's over. So it was set back, Jay hit a long ball into the corner, didn't make it. Joe Hart, if you remember, run like a bat out of hell to, to keep the ball in. He kept it in, got it out of his feet, banged it forward. And all of a sudden, people started falling over, missing tackles, gets to Aguero. And as you expect him in that situation, he scores a winning goal. It was, I have to say, of all the games I've been involved in, that noise at that moment when that goal went in is... It's different to anything I ever heard or heard before or since. It was just unbelievable sound, different sound to a football crowd. I think it was a mixture of screaming and, and, and noise and it was just an unbelievable moment.
I wasn't given any targets. Um, I knew that the club just wanted to stay in the Premier League. That, that was the key to them. Um, but I also felt very, very quickly when I, when I first went in that there was a group of players that were actually better than um, they were led to believe. Um, I think maybe uh, the club felt, well, if we stay up, that's enough. But I felt with the group that, that I had to work with and the players that we, we added in, in the following seasons, I felt that their expectations should be higher. And, and I always felt that um, supporters of clubs don't want to hear that we're just happy to be here uh, and we're lucky to be here. And, and if we survive, uh, if we get to 40 points, that's enough. Um, I always felt that supporters want to hear that we want to be better next year, we, we want to win a cup. All those positive mantras, they don't want to hear the, uh, the negative. Uh, aspect of it, it doesn't stimulate anybody, it doesn't get anybody excited. So um, I always try to raise expectations whenever we went into a club. It's high risk because you know that if you do raise expectations um, and then you you underachieve, then you're going to come under pressure. In the end, that's exactly what happened at Stoke. But for the most part, um, we had a great time, we had a great four years. Um, three. Top 10 finishes, uh, 13th in the fourth season I was there. Um, and I look back on it, it was it was a time where we beat almost everybody in the league at some point in those four years. We we had record points totals in the Premier League. Um, we beat the likes of Liverpool 6-1. Uh, we beat Man United, we beat Man City. We beat all the teams in the league. So at that point, I felt we were producing the best football that Stoke City supporters had ever seen. They're quite regimented and, and Tony Pulis, that's how he sets his team up and that, he's had great success of that and the club itself, that's probably when they first went into the Premier League, that's exactly what was needed. But um, as I said, I just felt the, the group that, that I had to work with and inherited had a little bit more and, and could could be better than, than they were at that point. And uh, we just said about trying to play a little bit more football, but obviously still keeping all those elements of of the, the game that they'd always had in terms of the, the drive and the desire and their the commitment to the course. So we kept all that, but we just sprinkled a little bit of fairy dust on it and tried to make it better. We played some great stuff, I have to say. We, we, we had different players. We had uh, creative players. We had powerful players. So, so the mix that we had in those in those days was very, very good. Um, we had the likes of Steven and Zonzi, who was the top player. Uh, Marco, obviously, who was a little bit of a maverick, as everybody knows, and, and at times could be difficult to uh, to manage, but on his day, he was unplayable. Uh, you had the likes of Johnny Walters on, on the right-hand side, who, who would give everything in the game and drag people along with him just by virtue of his his will and, and his desire to, to get something out of the game. So the mix right through the team was really, really good. And uh, once they understood what I was about in terms of how we should go about um, our general play and what we're trying to achieve, uh, it, was, it was great times. Sir Alex is, is on a pedestal in terms of how great he's been as a manager and as a coach, just because he's been able to, to build and dismantle teams and still be successful clearly he's, he's had the resources and the stage to be able to do that but it's not easy it's not easy and, and I think what happened at Stoke was we we had a formula where we we didn't spend a great deal um, and we had to get our main purchase correct we had to supplement it with good loan deals for, for good players and we had to look after the ones that we had to try and retain them to make sure that we had the core to to supplement the, the players that we were bringing in. And you had to have all those elements that had to work every season. And, and if I'm honest, in the last year, those elements didn't work. We, we, we spent money on, on likes of Imbula, didn't work for us. Uh, our loan deals didn't have um, the impact that other loan deals in previous seasons had had. And maybe as well as that, we, we had other players that were getting a little bit older and needed to be replaced and the the level of young players coming through wasn't there either. So there was a number of elements and a number of uh, reasons why the, my final year uh, didn't go as, 
as we'd hoped. But um, looking back over the the full course of my time there, I, I want to change that. I think it was it was a great time. I think uh, we had great moments, uh, great games that we were involved in. Um, it's just disappointing that now in this day and age, Stoke are where they are because uh, they shouldn't be, in my view. Your fundamentals always remain. I think that's important. It's what you stay true to. Um, I've always wanted to have teams that will dictate to the opposition, will be on the front foot, who will be uh, able to have that physicality that we talk about, but not in terms of overstepping the mark, but being able to com compete. And, uh, and I've always felt that any team that I put out will, will always have uh, those elements to it. But um, dependent on individual talent within your groups, then sometimes you have to shape your philosophy and and go in different ways in terms of formations or, or approach to games. I look at how I approach the game because I'm long in the tooth and my, my time has been and gone, but certainly from a forwards type of situation, it's changed me because in my day it was very much uh, the way I played was with my back to the goal. It was about retaining possession, it was resisting challenges, it was bringing people into the game. Um, whereas now I think the role of a striker is slightly different. Um, they have to be adept at finding those little spaces um, in between the lines, as we've talked about. Still got to retain good possession in, in high areas of the game. But the more I see them, the modern game, there's less resistance to challenges, there's more looking for fouls. The game's refereed in a completely different way as well, which has an influence on, on what players think they, they can get out of the game or, or get to their advantage. So there has to be a balance. I think the balance is being able to show robustness and physicality when maybe the opposition expect you to go down easily. And I think that's the balance that modern day strikers are able to, the top ones uh, understand and able to, to use to their benefit. I like Aguero just, just because he's, he, as I said, he, he can retain possession. He, he's not averse to, to drawing fouls uh, like all top strikers are, but uh, when he needs to be strong in, in the moment when when he knows he can get shots off or can go, then that's when he's he's really robust and and he can retain possession and, and get shots off and, and score goals, which he's done remarkably well over the years. He's he's just a guy that you would like to play with or play alongside because you know that he'd he'd create chances for you as well as taking them in himself.